Welcome to the Third Wind channel, where today we're talking about the bad guys or characters with general antagonistic qualities from the shows iCarly, Victorious, Zoe 101, and Drake and Josh. A few days ago, I think I did this video for iCarly, and I've left the iCarly characters towards the end, so if you want to click off, you can, but I thought it'd be interesting to mash them in with the other shows to see how they compare. But without further ado, let's get into the tier list itself, where our tiers are favorites, great characters, entertaining, did their job, and forgettable slash boring. Our first character is Buck from Drake and Josh, the pilot of Drake and Josh, actually. And uh, he plays this kind of um, j jock or kind of, I don't know, bully type. And I think he just did his job. You know, he scared Josh enough that he had to train and do something he'd never done before, fighting. And uh, in the end, he beats up both Drake and Josh, which is what he had to do. It was, he, he did his job. Moving on, we got Buddy and Guy, who I find very entertaining and definitely not forgettable. I still think back to my childhood and think, don't get fooled by a Buddy and Guy type. Uh, because, you know, young, uh, impressionable men like Drake and Josh can easily get fooled. So, uh, you know, it, it serves as a good lesson for uh, growing uh, adults that, uh, you know, they, they exist. Moving on, we got Jade, who I think I would put in great characters. She used to be definitely one of my favorites, but with time and more recently, I've kind of she's fallen down on my list of favorite characters and I think she serves a great uh, purpose in Victorious as that main antagonist the one that kind of always bites back at Tori's ideas or uh, you know does evil things like shave a cat's head or whatever right so she's definitely a great antagonist and a great character and we get to see things like uh, you know why she acts the way she does is it because of her self-esteem or does she just not trust Beck uh, all these things that why she acts the way she does, uh, very interesting. Moving on, we have Corey, who I throw in entertaining. I love how uh, the whole mechanic or uh, the dynamic between Megan and her brothers and her brothers trying to help Megan, and she has a hard time kind of uh, grasping this, so she doesn't believe them when uh, Corey is uh, cheating on Megan, basically. But when it all comes down and Megan learns the truth, then the brothers are even beat up by Corey, which is uh, pretty funny, and it was an entertaining villain for that one episode. Moving on, we got Haley and her friend, who I think are completely forgettable. They're from Victorious, if you didn't know. Uh, yeah, I just don't have much to say about them. As adversaries, they were very boring. Moving on, we got Keith from Zoe 101. He is in season one, and he's the bully. For, he's Dustin's bully, who makes him do his homework and his laundry, and I think that, you know, it's he was twice the size of Dustin, so he was a believable uh, character. Did he just do his job? Probably, but I, I actually found him a little entertaining. I think I'd throw him in the bottom of entertaining. Moving on, we got Fawn, uh, who was actually quite scary. You know, I, I don't know if I'd throw her in my favorites because I find her a little annoying, but she, she was a great character in the sense that she actually was uh terrifying for Tori because no one else saw her and she felt like she was going out of her mind and I thought that was a really great dynamic so yeah definitely throw her towards the top of this tier list moving on we got Mrs. Hafer who is a uh, Drake's um evil teacher or I don't know how evil she really was but she made Drake's life very difficult and you know because he was kind of a bad student but it was the dynamic between Miss Hafer and Drake just definitely makes me put her in my favorites because I get I get laughs from when Miss Hafer is talking with her kind of monotone uh hateful voice against Drake uh, so yeah definitely in favorites moving on we got Rebecca who is a fan not favorite. Uh, everybody hates Rebecca. I, I in the list I saw, everyone just placed her at number one villain for Zoe 101, and uh, you know I think I'd put her as a great character. She's another character like Buddy and Guy, who I think uh, you can learn a lot from when you're growing up. Uh, there's these really toxic people who um, you know you will get into relationships with that you don't realize at first, and she's one of them. She was very toxic, and she tried to sabotage both Zoe and Chase and she's just evil to the core you know but she's a great character and uh definitely more like more than entertaining she needs she deserves to be in this tier here moving on we got uh Mr. Dickers who was the equivalent of um the principal in the breakfast club but you know in the victorious version uh, and I think he did a great job, you know, he was entertaining, uh, I, I don't know what else to say about him, just, uh, he was funny. 
moving on we have uh the the what is it the president or the dictator of yoruba and uh i thought he was entertaining uh, maybe he just did his job i i'll put him at the very bottom of entertaining because it was it was funny watching him jam along to uh my the, that michael jackson song moving on or jackson 5 song uh moving on we got logan who you know big character like jade and uh i have to put him in my favorites because i i love the way how he is kind of uh, an antagonist and kind of a bad guy in the group but uh you know when it comes down to it he's a he's a great friend you know jade the, sa the same way but the way that logan is also like rich so they can use that in the series like oh they can do this crazy class trip that would usually be impossible because they have money or they can set up a huge sound system because they have he has money and it's just his divisive kind of the details around his character make him one of my favorites and i just love the way that the show kind of makes use of him i i, I can't really explain it but he's one of my favorites for sure moving on we have the ghost of pca which is uh I, you know i just included this green fog because it was, it was kind of weird but to me it was really like the opposite of forgettable it was a like that episode really ingrained to my bread ahead and we don't have a lot of supernatural villains in these shows you know makes sense but uh i can't put him in great character but i'll put it at the very top of entertaining i was entertained by that episode moving on we got megan who i'm gonna throw right at the top of favorites i think that not enough people think about her as just this really twisted evil sister uh she she has to be one of the most evil people on this list and she's so entertaining and she's just one of my absolute favorites uh great great character moving on we got mindy who isn't an antagonist for very long but she's definitely like, kind of like an adversary like these two um but when she is that adversary she just makes josh's life uh a little miserable because he's always in second place to mindy and i love that I, I love that idea uh so I, I i'd like to put her in my favorites as well moving on we got steven who is uh the typical uh dating two guys uh jerk type and uh you know he was he was kind of bland as a person he was just kind of playing the boyfriend uh but uh i guess he did his job is he more than that yeah no i think i think maybe he's even forgettable and boring i honestly think so they could have definitely thought up of a more uh evil or interesting guy so i'm going to throw him uh at the very top of forgettable next we got backpacks by stacy or stacy i don't i don't know what her name really was but we'll call her stacy uh, and she was evil, you know, she took this idea that uh, Zoe crafted and she made money from it. And that, that's that's truly evil. Uh, she was definitely, I think I'd throw her in entertaining. I throw, I'll throw her about here. But so, this idea that you come up with an idea and then someone steals it and then they're making money off of it and they can go big time with this idea. And then you're stuck here with nothing. That's scary. You can learn from that. I, I, I do. I did enjoy this. Uh, this uh, antagonist. Moving on, we got the theater thug, who is always one of my favorites. I don't know. I can't really explain why, but the way that he does these crimes and then Josh plays him and then he gets punished for it because everyone keeps calling the police on Josh. It was just so funny. And just the idea of a theater thug was just it was it was a really funny episode and I, I enjoyed it a lot. So I can't explain every favorite I have, but he's definitely one of them. Next up, we got Tiberius, who uh, he definitely did the job. You know, it's, it's a bit of a joke putting him in here, but um. He definitely did the job, uh, scaring uh, Drake and Josh and even the animal control guy. So, uh, yeah, I, I, even I was scared of him. I don't know what I'd do in that situation. Moving on, we got Seamus, who might be someone who you don't remember at all from Zoe 101, but he was in the final season in the episode Alone at PCA, where um, basically our main cast stays at PCA. And one of the trophies gets broken, and then it's this whole, like, murder mystery type thing. And it ends up being this old uh, classmate of Dean Rivers uh, at PCA. So, it, and we get a whole fight with him, and that's pretty, it's pretty entertaining. I, I like that episode quite a bit. Moving on, we got Ryder Daniels, who, again, is this uh, bad, bad boyfriend kind of user, um, who, honestly... I wouldn't even say he's that entertaining. I thought he was kind of boring. Like, he's well thought out, and he's truly evil, but he kind of just did his job for me. I'll put him at the top, I guess. And I, Buck, Buck deserves to be at the bottom. But, um, yeah, for me, he just never really did it. Next up, we got Tyler, who, um, honestly, 
I find find really forgettable, boring. They kind of employed him and then just dropped him a few episodes later. And Megan just didn't get the same enjoyment out of having Tyler, and neither did I. I thought him doing it was always just bad and wrong and wasn't very satisfying. Moving on, we got Vince Blake, who, um, ah, man, this is a difficult one. He was never my favorite, one of my favorites. I throw him, I throw him around here. Uh, Vince Blake, uh, is really weird because he starts off, you know, I don't even say he's evil. He cheats on a test, yeah, and then he, okay, well, he does beat up the guys, which is obviously evil, but then he comes back, and we never really get to see if he really makes the one, 180 or, yeah, 180 and uh, becomes a good guy because he starts uh, dating, what is it, Loda, Lola? But it's still, I still get the vibe that he hadn't become truly good. So that makes him a, a lot more interesting. And um, the whole dynamic of this like star player and what he's allowed to get away with versus just a regular uh, kid at the school is very interesting. So he's a great character. Moving on, we got Neville, who I got to throw right up here. And, you know, Megan and Neville have some uh, co- uh, you know, like qualities. They're both very smart, but you know, Megan would kick Neville's ass. We know this. Uh, but uh, he definitely one of my favorites. I don't think I need to explain. Oh, by the way, we've just hit iCarly here, so uh, it's time to compare the iCarly uh cast or the protagon- uh, antagonist with the rest of the shows. So yeah, Neville definitely still stays up there in my favorites. Next up, we got Griffin, who I definitely just compared to to Ryder. I think these two have a lot of common qualities and I think they're both kind of just did their job kind of forgettable especially with this being like the season two finale I just really didn't do the trick moving on we got Argentia who I mean now I remember pretty freshly but I feel like she's gonna end up being down here but she was quite evil but I never found her very entertaining so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw her in here we didn't really get much of a character out of her either so yeah she deserves to be down here somewhere next up we got Chip who Unfortunately, I don't remember what I put him in as in the iCarly video. Was he entertaining? It's it's like he was almost entertaining. Did he do the job? I don't know. I feel like he created a fairly uh, just lukewarm iCarly episode. I think he's going to go down as forgettable. Uh, but maybe maybe at the top of forgettable. Next, we got Chuck, who is a great character. Uh, I wouldn't say he's one of my favorites, but uh, I love the dynamic between him and Spencer and how... Um, he just gets away with everything and, and puts on this like, oh, I'm just I'm just trying to learn math, you know, uh, that whole thing. I won't talk too long about these iCarly uh, characters. I'm sure you've seen the other video already. But uh, yeah, he deserves to be somewhere up here. Wade Collins and his uh, hobnocker uh, asshole nature, uh, I'd say it was quite entertaining. I'd throw him in somewhere around here. Moving on, we got Miss Briggs, who I have to throw straight into my favorites. We'll put her right behind uh, Mindy. She just, there's something about her that just radiates this, like, not angry teacher, but this, like, kind of teacher who thinks she's above all the students, and um, she's just perfect for the show. Then we got the Shadow Hammer, who just perfectly did his job, just like, just like Buck. Then we got Missy, who... I'd say is a great character because you don't really see the twist coming that she's just sabotaging all of Carly's friends to get closer to Carly again. And I think that's pretty, pretty, you know, well done. Next up, we got Nora. And Nora is a bit tough when I compare her to all these because she's an absolute psycho. Would I say she's a great character? I, I feel like she deserves to be like up here, like it's very entertaining. But no, she has to go in favorites as I am a quite a move fan of the whole psycho uh, character type and she definitely deserves to be that psycho character type uh, and yeah we'll, t- we'll throw at the bottom of favorites next we got justin who i think will definitely go down as forgettable or boring you know i hate carly 57 i think uh next we got kyoko and yuki who i think i discussed in the iCarly video that they were a little bit just they could have been better like they were pretty smart in what they were doing but they just mm, never really delivered i think they just did their job Next up, we got Mandy, who I got some comments from, oh, Mandy's not a bad guy, blah, blah, blah. But she does definitely get in the way of iCarly sometimes. And uh, um, I found her very annoying. Uh, She's not necessarily forgettable, but she just did her job. I wish she wasn't there, though. Uh, Next, we got Lubert, who is a great character. I like the whole, I know, I'll throw him him up here. Uh, I like the whole, uh, I already explained this in the other video, but... I like the whole idea that uh, he had his past life and, uh, you know, b- certain tragedies have 
made him into who he is today. Next up, we got Mr. Howard, who is a slightly downgraded version of Mr. Briggs, but just a very angry, wishes he was higher somewhere in life uh, type of teacher, who uh, I have to throw in as at least entertaining. I'll put him right here. Uh, next, we got the Sunshine Girls, who again, um, I'd throw them entertaining because they are quite entertaining, just the way that they were able to make Spencer lose. Uh, or not lose, uh, but, uh, you know, get him angry. Next up, we got Nora's parents who are truly... We don't get much of a character from them. They are truly evil people, and they, de they deserve to be into at least entertaining. And lastly, we have the forgettable petographers from iCarly who are the definition of forgettable from a quite forgettable iCarly episode. But... That is our list here with all the villains of the four kind of Schneiderverse shows uh, minus Sam and Cat. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Let me know which uh, characters you would put in your top five in the comments below. And um, yeah, thank you for watching the Third Wind channel. I'll see you guys very soon with a new video and uh, later.